well, well, the show and the match specifically that made me a wrestling fan, which is behind me there, August 29th, 1992, SummerSlam, Wembley Stadium. Um, that was what got me hooked 30, 30 odd years ago. The absolute clinic put on by uh, your brother, Brett, and brother-in-law, uh, British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. Um, now that match, still 30 odd years old, uh, on holds a very special place in, in many fans' hearts. And of course, it was kind of built around this very realistic for a time storyline, this family turmoil of a family imploding around your sister Diana being caught in the middle. Um, what, what are your memories of, of of that match and all the lead up to it and and also why it's so beloved three decades on? Yeah, just an incredible match. Um, you know, and even though Brad and Davey had um previously wrestled, you know, in the Hart Foundation uh British Bulldogs feud, right? And and had some matches on Stampede before that and had, you know, been tag team partners as well. And it was very well known they were uh brother-in-laws, you know, that uh Davey had married Brett's sister. Um, you know, we the WWF really played well, you know, on that storyline. And it was just such a natural storyline. It didn't need a lot of drama. They didn't need uh um, you know, any uh abductions or um you know blackmailing or anything like that you know some of these very contrived storylines they've had over the years with wrestling you know this was just uh um you know kind of an internal family battle you know for, for the intercontinental title and diana being kind of caught in the middle like you said between brett and davy and uh you know it, it was it was just, it was a, a great intrigue about it and um you know, Davey had never won the uh, singles title before. You know, he had been successful in the in the tag team wars. Now he's breaking out as uh, the British Bulldog. He's a individual star. So, uh, you know, and it was just it was a classic baby face match. You know, Brett was uh, a baby face. Davey was a baby face. Um, you know, and and to have it in Wembley, England, you know, it was like Davey's backyard. You know, perfect location. You know, and then you know they had like nearly seventy thousand fans live at the show and um you know and they let them wrestle you know like they, i think the match was over 30 minutes you know and uh um you know just just a classic match and um davy had overcome a staff infection and he'd been out of action for uh, a month prior to the match you know and, and there was some doubt whether he'd even be ready to perform you know and uh um he and brett didn't even have much time to to meet, you know, get together and put the match together, but they did, I think really just on the day of the show. Um, and, um, you know, and then I, I think Brett, Brett basically knew how to uh, lay the whole match out. And and for Davey, just because there was some ring rust and he hadn't been in the ring for over a month, he, he was very worried. I think even in the first minute, he was already uh, uh, running out of breath and Brett just, you know, calmed him down and said, we're, we're going to be okay. Just follow my lead, you know, and, and it was just a tremendous match, you know, back and forth. And, you know, it was a testament to both their working abilities, you know, that they put on such a flawless match, incredible finish, you know, you know, Davey uh, sat out Brett's victory role and, and got the victory and, uh, uh, and the people loved it. And, um, you know, Davey was crowned as a new champion, um, and, and, and it actually helped Brett, you know, I, th I think, uh, you know, Brett, Brett, uh, came across as someone who was, uh, you know, initially disappointed and upset at losing, you know, a high stakes match. And then, and then, you know, when he, he and Davey and Diana embraced at the end of the match, you know, it, it was, uh, um, it was just one of those great moments in wrestling, you know, and, uh, it, it was great for both their careers. It really was, you know, and, uh, it's definitely my most memorable uh summer slam match maybe uh pay-per-view match of, of of any that i've seen you know it was it was just such a classic match and uh um did so much for both their careers uh where did you watch it uh i think i watched it um maybe at um I don't remember now. I think it was one of my sister's houses. You know, we we ordered it on pay per view and watched it live, and we had no idea how the match was going to go. You know, ourselves. Um, you know, I I had a feeling maybe Davy might be winning the title. You know, it just seemed like the time was right. Um, you know, so so we had no idea what the outcome was going to be or anything. You know, and uh, it was just just a, a perfectly laid out match. You know, and so we were able to enjoy it just like other fans. You know, and uh, um, you know we. We usually watched a lot of the pay-per-views from one of our sisters or family's uh, homes. You know, when Diana was in the city, um, you know, because she had been living, at, she and Davey had been living in Florida for the most part. But, um, you know, when when we were 
together in 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 Calgary, we would always uh, watch it from someone's home, you know, and uh, uh, it was kind of nice, you know. Some, sometimes we'd go to uh, you know a bar or a theater, but we really like to just be with our uh, family members to watch mm-hmm. uh, the shows and uh, enjoy it ourselves. So yeah, and it was uh, it was great to see that match uh, unfold, and um, you know, de- definitely one of my fa- favorite memories. How was it for Diana being involved in a, you know, being really immersed in a WWF storyline? I think interesting. You know, Diana uh, was very, um, very modest, very quiet, but uh, they, they, she was used very well in that storyline. Mm. You know, she handled it really well. I mean, she was a, a beautiful girl, but there was nothing that was uh, pretentious or sleazy about her role. Nothing over dramatic. Um, you know, and then they kind of did a storyline with her later with Shawn Michaels and you know it appeared like she was uh you know Shawn was coming on to her or something um and I I didn't think that was uh, very well done I thought that was kind of exploitative and uh it uh ruffled some feathers in in my family my dad uh wasn't very happy with that you know so um but you know Diana actually was a, a good performer you know she she could play uh a number of roles well you know but uh um, you know, she, she just seemed to be, um, uh, a wife and sister-in-law caught, you know, in the middle there and, uh, you know, her emotions and uh, expressions I thought were perfect. Like uh, in her own right, she showed, showed, uh, she could be a really good performer. Mm. I think, I think if you take Diana away from that equation, it's a very different match. I think it's such an iconic scene at the end of SummerSlam, the three of them in the ring, arms raised, fireworks going, but it, without that family dynamic, I don't think it would have been the same. No, it wouldn't have been the same at all. No. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of that human touch, you know, and then at the end, you know, it was just, just, they, they all played it so well, you know, I, Brett was initially, uh, dejected after losing the match and the title, you know, and the fans were going crazy cause, you know, cause, uh, Davey won, um, you know, and then, uh, there was, uh, that little awkwardness, that tension at the end, and then they all kind of, uh, uh, put their differences aside and embraced each other in the ring and, you know, it would be, uh, Kind of similar to seeing two brothers competing against each other in a Super Bowl or something, you know. But when you add the uh, the third element, you know, uh, that that female element, uh, it makes it even more touching. And you, you mentioned Shawn Michaels. Though. I, I believe the original plan, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the original plan but it was that it was supposed to be Brett versus Shawn Michaels for the championship with Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man doing the classic big man or, you know, main event at that show. And that Brett convinced Vince McMahon that actually they should be the main event, uh, that he that it should be A versus the Bulldog in London um, after they changed the venue, but also B, that they should be the main event because no one else could follow them. Is, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not sure if uh, Sean was the original opponent scheduled to face Brett or not, um, but I... Um... I know Brett really advocated for Davey, you know, and said this is the right time for Davey. And Brett was well established as Intercontinental Champion, and uh, he had really made that nice transition from tag team to singles wrestling. And he was the o- most over baby face in the promotion at the time. You know, there, there was nobody more popular than Brett. And um, so I think he. And that was he, always okay. the case on UK tours, just as someone who went to many UK tours and was a, and yeah. was a huge. A huge fan of your brother growing up. I mean that the 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 Brett Hitman Hart reaction. There was something about his connection with the crowd, which was yeah. unlike anyone else on the card. It was like a it was like a rock star come into the venue. It was very different to everyone else, and that never yeah, changed yeah. throughout his career. Yeah, no, absolutely. So you know, it was uh, just the perfect time and place, and you know, and and Brett was absolutely right. Like uh, uh, nothing else could have followed their match, right? And it, it was it was fitting that. Uh, you know, Davey Russell in his home country in in the last match of the show. It should have been the final match, and uh, you know, it 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 wouldn't have uh, you know it 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 wouldn't have been well as well received if it had just been uh, preceding the Warriors and Savages match. You know, which which wasn't that great anyway. You know, it was pretty right. limited. You know, even with all the uh, outside uh, elements there with uh, with. Uh, sensational sherry and elizabeth and everything um you know it, it really made sense to put uh brett and davies match on last and give them as much time as they needed you know because it went about 30 minutes i think and it was just a um a classic layout and it went perfectly and um you know and, and again it it helped brett a lot because in in 
in dropping that title uh, as, as gracefully as he did, you know, and showing some sportsmanship and kind of uh, uh, reconciling with Davey and Diana, you know, at the end of the show, um, you know, he, he got a lot of um, empathy. And then, you know, a month later, you know, they, they put the world title on him. They had him beat Ric Flair in Saskatoon here. And uh, so, you know, it actually elevated Brett's position, you know, made him an even stronger star. Yeah. So sometimes in, in losing, you can, you can become stronger. And, uh, you know, it was a win-win situation for both Brett and Davey. And in a very surprising way, he became WBF champion very quickly at essentially a, an untelevised house show that was straight to video. but in Canada, in Saskatoon, in front of a crowd yeah. that really, uh, very strange, but a crowd that really understood. I don't think anyone quite understood what it was happening in the moment that a title change had happened. No, um, no, no, re- really odd, you know, and I, I think it was, uh, there was obviously some urgency in having Ric Flair drop the title. You know, I, I guess mm. uh, they didn't have him in their long-term plans after all, you know, and then they decided they had to have him drop it, you know, to someone right away. And uh, at the time, you uh, you know, War- Warrior was leaving, and, and Davy unfortunately uh, uh, left shortly after that. You know, over this the steroid scandal, I guess. Uh, um, and uh, so, you know, it, it made sense. You know that uh, Brett was the the right guy. You know, even though he just dropped the Intercontinental title, and um, you know, so they didn't even schedule it for a pay per view match or build up a title match with him and Flair. They just had him beat Flair uh, in Saskatoon, and uh, you know, and and they filmed it but it really wasn't a televised match you know and totally uh different from what you see today so and uh you know brett brett was certainly ready for the for the role you know and he, he had a really good following in north america but especially in uh, europe you know in the uk and germany you know his merchandise was outselling everybody's there and uh and um he was a huge drawing card in all those places and so while the north american market had, had, had dropped somewhat for live shows you know after hulkamania and yeah. Uh, the Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior periods were over, um, you know, and there was a, you know, it was a, a bit of a drop in business, a decline in the industry in North America. It was just huge in Europe, you know, and a lot mm. of that was because of Brett's popularity. Yeah, and I, I believe that was part of the rationale for why SummerSlam came over to the UK in the first place. Was it uh, originally a UK, a US venue was swapped for the UK and what a great move that was because I think you know wrestling was huge in mid-1992 and it was just the the perfect moment I think in terms of pop culture 